Okay, Aries, you already know we are jumping into part two, your Patreon reading love, January 2022. I'm getting that things are popping off. I'm getting that things are popping off. For some reason, this kind of tower moment energy is reminding me of Pluto. Pluto being in Capricorn right now. Um, the new age ruling planet um, uh, for the sign of Scorpio. I think that's why I'm being called to that kind of tower moment here that you got in part one of your reading areas. Now Pluto is in Capricorn now. Capricorn is the ruling sign of this card, the devil. So we have the, um, and in the zodiac, the tower moment occurs so as to break the chains of the devil here. This devil card energy is powered by the number 15. The tower card energy is powered by the number 16. So um, this is kind of this progress in numerology from the 6 to the 7, the perseverance to the perfection, the refinement of this kind of iron or the, the resources of the tower here. Um, now this Pluto energy is currently in Capricorn in Western astrology here. This is energy of death, rebirth, and transformation. This is where your power lies here. The planet Pluto is a powerhouse type energy. Um, in Capricorn, 10th house, this is image, career, notoriety, infamy, what you're known for in the wider public eye. Now this has to do with your kind of social standing and status. It's a very masculine energy. Now, what I'm kind of being pulled to is the fact that in February, although again, this is a love reading for January 22, in February, there's supposed to be a Pluto um, return here, as it were. And I think if I'm not wrong here, this is when Pluto might be moving forward again. I think it may be retrograde at the moment, which is why it's a return here in February. February 22nd of 2022. So I feel as though that intrinsically this is going to impact your uh, love uh, sector as well because, again, we have talked about kind of this notoriety. We talked about evaluating worth. And so when there's all eyes on you, there's psychic energy coming to you and you're going to be well known for what you do and chances are the person that you're attracting is going to actually be quite impressed and quite aligned with what it is that you do. They're going to kind of respect and, and see what you're really about um, to the extent that you've aligned yourself uh, with you know what it, is, what it is that you do for work is what I'm getting here. So I find that whoever you're attracting here is, is going to be on par um, understanding and um, kind of either partaking in the line of work or the philosophy, excuse me, behind the line of work, I should say, that it is that you work on. Whereas the tower moment occurred from maybe these past connections because this person was either not on the similar path or didn't see the value. Again, value is what I'm seeing here. It's almost as if with the justice card in reverse, um, things weren't adding up. It could be a differences of love languages, as well, but you know, not to uh, not to fret and not to worry. Uh, you know, this happened for a reason, is what I'm getting. If you are resonating with this kind of falling out energy that I'm seeing here, um, I do feel it uh, transformative. And again, now you're going to know what to look for, and you're going to be able to better see the red flags. Okay, as opposed to kind of immaturely being infatuated. Uh, Aries is what I'm getting for you. Okay, the Five of Swords in the reverse, just maintaining bridges to the past, bridges and connections. It could be former lovers, it could be an Aquarius. Uh, sun, moon, rising. This is the energy of Aquarius. Um, keeping an eye open, not totally slamming the door. Some readers have advised against it, but this is what the Five of Swords is in reference to. Now, since you are of a, you know, a higher mind and knowing and understanding of your own evaluation and self-worth, Aries, you might not want to keep this door open uh, 
to the past. It depends on, you know, what your uh, karma for love is in regards to that person. Um, the Five of Swords in reverse again could also be in reference to f uh, family and friends and people that, are, that you are choosing to kind of spend your life with. Uh, it could be even just over the phone or social media, things of this nature. There's so many options nowadays and so many forms of love, uh, platonic, romantic, and you know things of that nature. The Seven of Cups in reverse is, I read it as a narrowing of the path from the options of the seven to the six, which is a soulmate energy, another soulmate energy that came out, another six here. This is power and love card here uh, by the six and the seven of cups in reverse points to the six in the upright. Six in the upright is more of a kin spirit. Your child energies play well together is what I'm getting. It's more of a pure intent. That's why it makes me think that it could be friends from the past that you're rekindling this kind of platonic love for. Um, I wouldn't be surprised uh, if that were to occur for you. Two areas. This again could be in the romantic sense, uh, someone that you are more naturally inclined to be harmonious with, and that's what you're valuing more. Yes, I'm getting this Pisces energy in the upright. Pisces season, I believe, begins around the 20th of January to the 20th of February. Um, this is a high water mark for a relationship. I would not be surprised if you were in the kind of relationship of your dreams by then, Aries, truth be told. I mean, I know that's a mouthful, but the Ten of Cups, you know, it is not playing when it comes out here. This is just around the river bend, and the fact that this is Pisces energy, which is literally just around the river bend of the year, um, tells me that you are in line for a joyous occasion. The Seven of Cups in the reverse offsets the Ten of Cups in the upright, that leaves you with the three of cups in the upright. This is an energy of celebration. This is someone that you could bring to the family gathering, the family barbecue, the family reunion, um, family birthdays. I'm getting a lot of Cancerian uh, celebratory energy by summertime. You're gonna be in great standing with this person. Um, the three of cups is Cancerian, uh, you know, like late June, early July energy. Uh, is what I'm getting. Uh, I feel as though this river path represents a long-term relationship. Okay, It's not someone here just for a season or a good time. This is someone that you could really kind of grow with and mature. The bending of the river here reminds me of the bending of the snake uh, bodies here as well. Okay, someone that you could flow with and naturally move with. Uh, peacefully and happily, uh, you know, down a riverbed um, stream, as it were. Anything else, Spirit for Aries? Anything else, Spirit for Aries? Anything else, Spirit for Aries? This is someone that you could cohabitate with. This is third house Gemini, okay? Having to do with people near you in your vicinity, people that you share a living arrangement with as well. So it's someone that you're really gonna do well with too. The lover's card here. Um, It could have been that someone, you know, these past energies were trying to kind of keep you more so in a box, trying to keep you under their thumb, and I'm not getting that you were having that, uh, Aries, dear Aries. Really moving into your abundance here in regards to love is what I'm getting here, Aries, okay? And I think part of that is this kind of Nine of Swords energy in the reverse that we're left with, which is coming out of worry. Okay, not overanalyzing, really starting to like the bend, okay, of this riverbed here. Really starting to trust and, and allow things to bloom and blossom is what I'm getting with that Nine of Sword energy here, okay. No longer having to turn a blind eye to certain concepts of that Eight of Sword nature here because this Four of Swords energy has allowed you to kind of reflect, take the good from the bad with this tower card moment here. That's what the tower card represents, is you're 
retrieving uh, resources that can be repurposed. Okay, um, experience is one of those kind of um, purposes that they can be used for primarily. Okay, increasing your awareness and all that good stuff. Fairies love moon card in the reverse. Okay, this is still obviously you know unknowns. Okay, the blank canvas of what what is or what is yet to be. Uh, illuminated by the light of your conscious awareness, your experience, okay? Um, the strength card here, this is discipline over your lower energies. Again, the three of cups is a sober nature here, pointing to the two of cups in the upright, continuing to call and continuing to build your charge thematically is what I was getting for you, and your gravitational pull increasing, increasing, increasing. Okay, look at the kind of spiritual nature. This is a whole new version and variation and definition of strength, hands clasped in prayer here, okay? Uh, this is a lifestyle. This is abundant lifestyle. So I'm getting the number eight is about abundance here. We also saw signs of uh, abundance uh, with this in reference to the Wheel of Fortune. This justice card, 11 in the reverse, points to the 10 major, uh, major arcana card, Wheel of Fortune, which is Sagittarius, which is about abundance and expansion as well. Okay. So this is a lifestyle, is what I'm getting. Whereas this person, again, they, they almost didn't like your, your expansive nature, is what I'm getting with this Capricorn energy. Okay. They wanted to show signs of the ruling planet of Capricorn, which is limitations, constraints, roadblocks. Okay, they thought that they were enacting some sort of disciplinarian um, kind of prospectus over the gold mine that was you. Um, this was self-sabotaging to them. Okay, with the Ten of Swords in reverse. Um, and so now fate and fortune is handing you your power back with that Ten of Wands and saying, hey, look, the world is your oyster. You can do whatever it is that you want, Aries. And you can love whoever it is that you want because you know that you're starting with yourself first and foremost. And you cannot go wrong when you do that. Okay. All right, guys. Yep, yeah, remember that Six of Cups? Okay, pulling in that Six of Cups. We talked about that Seven of Cups in reverse. Pointing to the Six of Cups, this kind of youthful innocence and youth, youthful exuberance here. Don't lose your playful nature, okay, in between time. If you're not seeing quick results or changes, know that the magic is always in the present, okay? Anything else, spirit, anything else, anything else, spirit, anything else? I'm very happy that we got to get to that reading, and I'm just, you know, so happy for you, Aries. The future looks so lovely and pleasant for you. Okay. Despite, you know, maybe the harder path that you feel that you have to walk or lead, you know um, how to experience uh, tests and challenges, and you become a master at that is what I'm getting. Okay. Um, and if you don't feel like that resonates with you, well, this is the invitation to uh, achieve that level of mastery. So um, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Reach out. Um, 
as always, I'm always here for you and love and light to you. I appreciate your viewership and your time. Hot for more. Peace.